Imam al Hussein didn't just give his life. Imam al Hussein gave everything that he had, which most of us do not even think about doing, let alone acting out. He gave his friends, he gave his family members, he even gave all of his wealth. It's not just this, because again, maybe somebody can do that. It was the way in which he gave it. It was that in his last moment, as the enemies were about to behead him, the person comes towards him and he says, Oh Shimmer, the man who was about to behead him, don't do this. Why? Was he afraid? No, by that moment, he was already bludgeoned. He would, already, he would have died from blood loss within a few more minutes. He asked Shimmer not to do it because he says, continuing in the narration, if you kill me, you'll consign yourself to the pitfalls of hell. Now, it's not just that he gave, it's the way in which he gave that is unparalleled in society, unparalleled in human history. And that's why we uh, speak about this man so much, that we want humanity to know what this person was capable of achieving and what he did for you and I. He sacrifices his companions and he sacrifices his family. They all die for that mission. And then he stands alone on the battlefield. And he is literally faced with up to a hundred thousand unsheathed swords baying for his blood. He begins to cry. And as he cries, the enemies begin to call out to him and ask him, Why are you crying? And Imam Hussein could have responded by saying, You just slaughtered my six-month-old child, or you killed my best of friends and my sons and cousins. And I'm crying because I know in a few minutes you're going to ransack the tents and the women who are innocent. But he didn't respond with this. He responded back by saying, I'm crying for your sake. Why do you do an action that sends you towards the pitfalls of hell? Why do you commit murder? Why do you oppress? I'm crying because I, I feel sorry for you. I wish better for you. Now, can you imagine a human being more grand than when he is his, his family and friends are attacked? He is about to be killed. His whole family is about to be uh, plundered and his belongings taken from his family. And yet his primary concern is their afterlife. That is an individual. And if you understood that as a human figure, that is the kind of person that we should all be trying to look up to and emulate as a divine figure. His mission is not separate from his personality. And therefore, as a human figure, as a leader of mankind, he exudes the righteousness of justice and God consciousness, which means that he doesn't think about himself first, he thinks about humanity first. He thinks about their needs. There are many stories about how he would feed the homeless and the poor and the travelers. There are many stories about how he would look after. I'll just give you one as an example and then we can emulate this. The story says that, again, on that day, in the battlefield, in the desert plains of Iraq, in the summer, where it's, you know, 45, 50 degrees, after a long afternoon of struggle, he arrives finally at the bank of the river Euphrates, he disembarks his horse, and the first thing he does is that he takes water and gives it towards the horse to drink. He's been thirsty for days, he's not been able to drink, and his first thought process is someone else. The society that we live in at the moment is a very greedy society. It's a very egocentric society. It's about what I can get. Whereas whenever any prophet came or any representatives of prophets came, their first thought was how to build a better society. This is what we need to inculcate in ourselves. And therefore what Imam al-Hussein taught was to look beyond ourselves and to try to help those people who are downtrodden. In one of the salutations that is given to Imam al Hussein, one of the most famous ones is called the Ziyarat of Warith, and that is the uh, salutation of the inheritor. And he is known as the inheritor of Adam and Noah and Moses and Abraham and Jesus and Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon them all. Which means the reality is that when we spread the message of Imam al Hussein, we are actually spreading the message of all the Prophets. They are one single body of thought, 
and that is to establish justice on earth. So therefore, if you are Christian or you are Jew or of any faith, indeed, even if you are not of faith, the fact that all of these individuals were trying to bring about a just and righteous society, that is something that everybody should be getting behind today. We know that there is much poverty, we know there's a lack of education, we know that there are natural disasters, oppression taking place around the world. Innately, all of us want to overcome those evil traits that are existent within society. What we fail is in not having a banner in which to work under sometimes. And therefore Imam al-Hussein gives us that guidance and that direction in which we can begin that process with. The 10th day campaign relates to the 10th of Muharram, an event in 61 after Hijrah, 1400 years ago, in which the grandson of the Holy Prophet of Islam, Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon his family, rose in order to free his entire community from oppression. And because of the sacrifice on that day and thereafter, we come together to remember this event. So the 10th day uh, programs that we commemorate is in order to let the world know of his sacrifice and how he stood for humanity and directly against oppression. The goal of it is to allow those people who are unaware of this human mission to let those people, for example, who may not be Muslim, allow them through the various means of advertising today, uh, be it uh, on billboards or be it uh, you know, by meeting people and talking to them, it's an opportunity for them to embrace the universal message of Imam al-Hussein that he did on the 10th of Muharram 1400 years ago. When you use the word community, community isn't just Muslim or sect orientated. Community means every faith and culture and language coming together. The only reason why a community of every faith, color and creed can come together and unite on something is if it's universal. And Imam al Hussein's message was universal because he stood for the downtrodden against those people who were oppressive. He stood for those people who wanted to liberate themselves from the shackles of evil. That's a universal message. And therefore, in whichever country you live, in whichever era you live, the concept of good versus evil is prevalent. And so, whatever faith you are, you can always refer back to the greatest sacrifice in human history, which is the sacrifice of Imam al Hussein. And that is why the whole community should come together. Today, when you look around the world, you see revolution after revolution take place, primarily because they want to rid themselves from political injustice. If Imam al Hussein was here today, he would be standing alongside those people. And therefore, when they look back into their history, they should use him as the archetype of their struggles and revolutions in order to become successful. Hence, the whole community should come together and partake in this uh, mission. For a campaign to be successful, it requires a number of things. The first thing is a pure intention. Because when you have a purified intention, God takes over. The second thing it needs is resources. And that works both financial and also manpower. No organization can be successful without those two things. And therefore what we do today is to appeal to anyone who is watching this, first and foremost, to get to know who Imam al Hussein is. And once you see his personality, his goals and his struggles, no doubt you will become enamored by them. Once you become enamored by them, you can't help but want to promote that message. And therefore, I would humbly request everyone who sees this to take time out and to see what you can do to further that message. That message cannot be successful unless and until each and every one of us do something to partake in that message. Imagine tomorrow, on the Day of Judgment, when your accounts are presented, and Imam al Hussein himself is standing to the side, and he himself has the opportunity to see how you aided and supported him. I can only imagine how pleased he would be with that, and how much he would want to help you on the Day of Judgment. Tawheed, or the oneness of God, means that everything you do, everything you see, everything you hear, everything you say, is encompassed by the remembrance of God. That no other thing comes before it. No greed, no wealth, nothing else. No desire. And when Imam al-Hussein was faced with every moment of Karbala, 
his mindset was on how to make that incident pleasing to God. For example, on the night before the battle, he divided his night into four. The first part of his night was spent looking after his family because he was a father, a husband and such. He spent time with his companions because his friends deserved part of his time. The third was time for himself to prepare himself for the events of tomorrow. And a fourth was to have direct communion between him and God. The reality is that the other three, the first three, were for the sake of God as well. And that is how he encompassed Tawheed. When the battle came, as Muslims, we are required and obliged to pray five times a day. Now, no matter what the circumstance, no matter where we are, that comes first. And what he would do on that day, as the battle is raging, arrows are flying, spears are flying, he stopped and he called to prayer. Again, putting the pleasure of God first. That is the purity of Tawheed, and that is what we as Muslims aim to strive for, God willing. Awareness can work in two ways. You can be aware very superficially by knowing names, dates, attributes. The second way of awareness is to live what that person lived. Let me give it to you in a very simple example. God forbid uh, tomorrow you have cancer and you come to me and you say, I have cancer. Now, I can feel sorry for you and I can say, oh, you know, I'm there for you and you know, I really pray that you get better and I'll be there when your chemotherapy concludes. But another person who's been through cancer, who knows the struggles, the fears, the anxiety, the pains of chemotherapy, when he speaks to you, he has a different level of cognizance, correct? He knows it better. In the same way, if I want to understand Imam al Hussein, it is not by knowing his birth date, it is not by just attending programs in his name. That's superficial. Knowing Imam al Hussein is to walk the path of Imam al Hussein. That when he fed the hungry, I feed the hungry. When he swallowed his anger, I swallow my anger. When I turn towards God, when he turned towards God, I turn towards God. And in striving in the steps of how he strives, that becomes the actual ma'rifah, and that becomes the way in which I live with him. And that's what we want people to do, to live a God-centric life in the same way Imam al-Hussein lived a God-centric life. Thank you very much. Um, just to conclude things, this is probably the most difficult one. In one sentence, if you could describe what Imam Hussein means to you on a personal level. Imam Hussein alayhi salam to me is the exemplar par excellence. And if I could strive to emulate an individual in all forms of my life, I would choose it to be him.